Today's reading, set in our lectionary for Palm Sunday, is the familiar story of Jesus and the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. It's told in all four Gospels and preceded in Mark and Luke by healings of people's sight as they call out to him. And he restores to them not only their physical sight, but their ability to see God in front of them. The triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Matthew 21, verse 1. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son! God bless he who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? the people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. It's really interesting. The crowd in John's Gospel include all of those who've just witnessed the miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus to life. But the crowd of people who come with Jesus, they've seen him heal and teach, they're excited, the anticipation is there, they're really for Jesus. They really look forward to what is going to happen. They have a great sense of expectation and excitement and joy. And they cry out in those marvellous words, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. This is what's on their lips. They are so, so excited. Of course, we know that within a week, things turn quite different. The same people may well have said of Jesus, that they had expectations, but their expectations were dashed. But for this moment, at least, they were filled with joy. As a result of the COVID-19 virus, lots of social groups have evolved. Through our doors, leaflets have been pushed. Uh, in our WhatsApp groups, we're able to join local initiatives. And there's one just down the road from where I live here. And this week, the leader of that group posted a video of everybody at eight o'clock on a Thursday night going outside their doors, banging on saucepans, clapping and applauding and cheering. And this is to encourage and to say thank you for the people in our National Health Service who are working so hard to help people. And also those people everywhere who are giving up their time and their energy and putting their personal safety at risk to help other people who are isolated. Uh, and who can't get out. It may be that to deliver prescriptions or shopping, maybe just a call uh, by the phone, just to show acts of neighbourly love. And there's a great sense in the video of people being very excited and unified by that joy in the same way as the crowd here as Jesus approaches. But I was talking to a customer this week and she was saying that she wondered if that kind of neighbourliness, if that kind of sense of a greater community would just diminish when things, as we hope and know they will, get back to a state not of normality, because I think a new, mal a new normality will need to be formed, but back to a, a non-virus state. She wondered if that would just be a passing phase. She thought that that was just the way people were. And that would certainly chime with our reading today. People were excited at what Jesus could achieve, but because of what they thought he was going to do. God in human form in Jesus came into Jerusalem and there was a great excitement. And in the different Gospels, that excitement is conveyed differently. Here in Matthew, we hear the whole city 
was thrown into an uproar. And in other Gospels we hear how people say, tell the crowd to be quiet. And Jesus says, if I did that, the very stones themselves would cry out in praise of God. Such a lot of anticipation. But this goes to the very heart of our relationship and our journeying with God, because we try in our quote unquote normal lives to incorporate God. We want to do the things which now at the moment we're denied doing. We don't have the freedom to go out. We don't have the freedom to mix with those we love and those we'd like to be with. Um, we have to limit ourselves. We even have to withdraw within ourselves. Be two metres apart when we're in a shop with somebody. Uh, try not to talk too much of them. Try not to embarrass them by getting too close. These are completely alien to us and our freedoms are denied. And in a much more profound way, of course, Many, many people are finding their working lives are being disrupted as they get laid off, as they get put on the government retention scheme, as they find their working practices diminished, as they find they take pay cuts. Lots and lots and lots of people are finding that there is a huge impact to this pandemic, which has very little to do with actually getting ill. It's the impact on society and what that means in terms of social freedom and even in our world of commerce. So a return to normality, what will that look like? What are we expecting? What does it mean to say God is coming into our lives just as Jesus comes into Jerusalem? Where is God in all those situations? And what are we looking for? Again, the very core of our relationship with God because God does come to us exactly like Jesus does, unassuming, not with great shout based on his own initiatives, not in a flashy, showy way, but calmly and profoundly. Now, what we do with that experience is, of course, our decision. The crowd were excited. They enjoyed being part of a crowd who were excited. There's that crowd mentality, and we all enjoy that when we go to concerts or sporting events or whatever it might be that we enjoy doing with other people. There is always that anticipation and that great cohesive sense of uniformity and excitement when something is about to kick off that we're going to enjoy, whatever that may be. But what is it we're expecting of God in our lives? What is it that we are thinking is going to happen? Because that way lies disappointment. That way lies frustration. That way lies looking at the relationship with God from the wrong way round. Can we control the God who made all things? Can we determine and set boundaries on the impact that that God will have on our lives? Can we in our own lives simply say, well, what we'd like to do today is this, followed by this, and I'll make time for God in that space there. Is that what the relationship with God is all about? Reading through the history of the church, right from the beginnings here when God became a human being in Jesus and walked amongst people like us, always you will find people's lives are changed by God not because they make time for God, not because they get God in their space, but because they allow themselves to experience God as God really is, rather than what they want. Events of those who have changed the course of history for the better have been those who have found in God's amazing, liberating love the courage to also then themselves love others without reserve. It's marvellous that people are rising to the challenge and meeting the needs of those that are isolated in our community as a result of COVID-19. It's marvellous, of course it is. Acts of kindness and love are wonderful, and that's what binds society together. And I think people are getting a sense of something bigger than themselves because of that. It's a positive from this enormous negative. But that's a transient thing. That's not life changing. It could be for some people. 
It could be that they discover that in uh, giving and in being aware of their neighbours, that's a feeling that carries on. But it's more likely that we'll be consumed by all the busyness of life again, all the things that we would like to do. It seems to me that in terms of enabling people to come into an awareness of God's amazing love, the biggest challenge is the busyness of our lives. The fact that we're always rushing from one thing to another, never stopping to enjoy the creation that is around us, all the world and its diversity, and the wonderful glory of engaging with another human being, but also just to rest in God's great love, to really understand that every waking moment is a gift entrusted to us. Every breath we take is a gift entrusted to us. And the question always is, what are we going to do with that gift? How are we going to use this life? How are we going to make best use of that life? And the example of our community is, at the moment is a taste of that. It is to love and to serve one another, but not because of a transient moment, even as huge as the current pandemic is but instead to understand that to give is the natural response of those who have received so much. It is the inevitable consequence of people who have found in their hearts the amazing joy that God loves them, that God accepts them, that God sets them free from all the pain and guilt and suffering of the past, all their preconceptions and all that people have put on them. This isn't something that we would cry. Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. That's all external and showy. When God comes to us, it is in a personal way for us directly into our hearts and makes a huge, huge difference. Our journeying in this life is to discover God for ourselves and to treat life and engage with life on God's terms, not our own. To have our diaries and our agendas filled with the things that God would have us do because they are good and wholesome, loving and kind. Not the things that we feel we'd like to do or we would find satisfaction from doing for ourselves. The whole of our nature is to turn inwards the celebration that the crowd turned outwards. They're looking to a big experience outside of themselves, something to be part of. In terms of relationship with God, it's all what happens inside us. It's not something that dissipates when the crowd becomes quiet. It's something that grows and gets bigger and is more vibrant. Each one of us is capable of embodying God because we are God's creation. We were made by God and there is a God-shaped hole in all of us waiting to be filled so that we can be community to others and praiseful of God throughout all our lives, not just in times of extreme suffering and need, as there is at the moment. Amen.